guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on a watercolor piece and this one is space themed. And I have always been inspired by space just like many other artists and writers. Space is just so rich with possibilities and with visual interest. So it's no surprise that it's something that a lot of people love. And I wanted to do one that has the feel of space that I like. I love things that involve showing space in a very accessible way. So shows and books, things that have it so that you can easily traverse it, you can be part of space and experience it are things that I love and I wanted to show that in this one. So this is one where she's just really free floating. She doesn't have a spacesuit on it. She doesn't even have an oxygen mask. She just has this, well, she has a mask, but she doesn't have an oxygen tank. And I just wanted to show it as something that she's experiencing and she's there and she can just be a part of space and it's not some far off thing that we can never experience. And I wanted it to be very tranquil and to have this really peaceful feeling to it. And that's something that started coming out as I did color studies and figuring out what I wanted to do with that. But overall, I just really enjoyed designing her out and thinking through this character and thinking through the composition of this one as well. One of the big things that I make sure to do when I'm figuring out the composition of a piece is that after I've gotten the initial sketch, like I did here, I did a thumbnail traditionally and then I scanned it in and then I refined it digitally and then I printed it out on a sheet of paper. And at the very beginning, you could see where I was repositioning it with my light box and my watercolor paper. And I always spend just a little bit of time repositioning it within that final dimensions of the paper that I'm going to use. Because a lot of times I have an initial thought of how it's going to be laid out within the page. But sometimes when I play around with it and try different compositions and different ways that the image itself is tilted, I find something that I like a lot better or is a lot more interesting and dynamic or more different than what I normally do. And that was the case with this one. I originally had the concept as her being very upright. This was going to be a vertical piece and she was actually very perpendicular and parallel to the defiance of the page. Her knee was coming out at a flat angle with the top and then our legs would come down with the sides of the paper. So it was very rooted in place. And then as I was playing around with it within the paper, I realized that I wanted to do this one as horizontal and I really don't do a lot of horizontal pieces. And I think it's just because I tend to be gravitated towards figures and characters and those tend to be very upright. And I'm glad that I push this in a different direction than what I normally do. It does come with a slightly different set of compositional challenges and benefits. And I would like to get more into challenging myself with the way that I'm composing things within the plane of the paper itself. And when it came time to do the color studies, I initially started working in a very traditional space look. I was working with dark colors and very cool tone colors and it was not feeling right. I was struggling with it and it was looking really muddy and just heavy and I didn't want this piece to be heavy. So I came back to the, my computer and I did some research on different ways that I could show space. I was looking up warm colors and eventually I got into looking at pastel galaxies or pastel space ideas. And that was exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted it to have the texture of space, but I didn't want it to be cool toned or really dark. I wanted it to be very contrary to what it normally is portrayed as. And I really got very excited at that point because that's when it felt like, yes, this is what this piece needed and it's different, it's unique. And I really love the idea of moving into things that are different from what they normally are. And in my color studies, I tested out doing these stars that were darker. So actually black stars and colored stars that were darker from the background that it's on. And I really love that look. It almost gave the background like this inverted look, like when you invert things in Photoshop and it's all reversed. That's a little bit of what it was getting there. And that was really cool of an effect for it to immediately look like that for me. So I was excited at that point to move on and start painting this. And when it came to the colors, I wanted to make sure that she really stood out from the background. That's something that can really ruin a piece is when you don't have enough contrast between the foreground and the background or the focal point and the rest of the stuff. That's a mistake that I make often, unless you want it to be a very lost and found look where things are hidden behind things and hidden within it. But that is not what I wanted for this piece. I wanted there to be 
a very clear line between where she was and the background was. And the way that I made sure that I did that was I had the background very pink, warm based, and then she was going to be mostly green based. And that gave it this really nice complementary color and then for the foreground I had these pops of yellow and in the background I also had yellow in there and that worked really nicely because yellow is right next to red on the color wheel and it's also right next to green and it just goes really well with both of those so it turned out to be a very nice bridge between the background and the foreground so that she wasn't starkly green on top of red it had some overlap where this mimicry of the yellow came through in the background and her. And that's a great way to get harmony when you feel like there's two very separate color palettes and they're not really meshing is find a color that can bridge the gap between the two of them. And for the background, I did a few tests where I had it much more contrasted and textury, more of a typical space texture and watercolor. And ultimately I decided that that was just a little too distracting from what I wanted for her. I wanted her to be the first read and the background to be a second read. And I did want it to still feel very peaceful and tranquil. So I decided that what I would do is I did a couple layers where I let the colors sit on its own and then mingle on the edges, but the center of the color would still be yellow or the center of it would be pink. And I let them just sit and mix and then be what they were. And then after I did several layers of that, I used a glazing layer of peach to harmonize it all together that brought them all back into this one more smooth and cohesive look. And I've been trying really hard lately to be very fine and light with each layer that I do in watercolor. I am not super right at it yet. I think that I, I tend to like to jump in a little bit too heavy handed. And sometimes I skip the step of testing it out on a scrap piece of paper before I put it down on my final. That is each color that I mix. And I'm trying to get better at really controlling the value that I have. And that just allows me to have a lot more control over what I'm doing. I have had many paintings where I realized that I just went too dark too fast and there was no really recovering it. And I felt really frustrated with that and with myself for doing that. So I've been really trying to focus on making sure that I do light layers that build up and then make very strategic decisions on where I'm going to put very dark or very saturated colors. And I actually feel pretty accomplished as far as that on this piece. I was being very thoughtful about being light-handed every step of the way, and it did come through for me. When I was doing the character with those greens and those yellows, I was feeling a little bit nervous about them, about making sure that they looked right with the whole piece and that they had that color that I wanted. And if I had gone straight in, if I had just dived in, it would have probably ended up very wrong, not what I wanted. But because I went in with these very small incremental changes, very light layers, I was able to steer it and see how it affected it with the whole color, with the whole color composition. And then with each new layer, I could steer it into the direction that I wanted. And it did end up being somewhere that I wanted it to rather than diving in and having it not fit with the rest of it. And I think this is one of those pieces that the final details really makes the piece. Before I really went in with the little gouache details that I go in with and finishing off the line work and adding those stars, it looks a little flat and it doesn't have that finesse and that spark that I wanted. But once I go in with the gouache and I add those white highlights in certain areas so that she has more of a glossy reflective look to it. And once I add those stars, which adds a lot more depth to that background and interest to it, that's one of the details, honestly, that I think really finishes this piece is those stars because the background is textured and nice and I liked it. But once I had the stars, it does place it and it gives it intention and meaning and a realistic, well, it gives it a real place, what it actually is rather than just being abstract color. And I really like, this is one step that I really love doing is when I get to finally go in and just clean up the edges with my micron pen. Cause there's always little hiccups in the watercolor where it doesn't quite meet up all the edges. And once I can go in there and just sharpen everything up, it makes a huge difference. And that is it for today. I really loved working on the space theme, so I think I'll be exploring that a lot more lately. Uh, but as usual, I do have the original painting available. So if you'd like to own her, I've got a link in the description as well as in my end card that'll take you to my art shop. But I also have prints in both the large and the small size available as well. So you can find that at the link as well. 
in both places, but I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe and that bell button and you'll get notifications on when I post. And I will see you guys at my next one.